The client needs to build a high speed network between two buildings. One gigabit per second network speed is not acceptable. He's looking for at least 10 gigabit per second speed. The Cat7 Ethernet cable has been considered, but the distance is the problem since there's about 180 meters between these two buildings. Then the fiber optic cable becomes an ideal solution since the fiber optic cable can carry up to 100 gigabit per second speed. So what devices we need to come up with a high speed network between these two buildings? Now let's find out. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. You'll receive the notification once we release the new video. Let's assume this is the first building. We have the router working with the ISP provider to achieve the high speed internet. There's four network port with 2.5 gigabit speed. Before we can expand this network to the second building, we do need another device in the first building. This is a network switch. There's two there's four 2.5 gig network port plus two SFP slot. This SFP slot supports a 10 gig speed. We will connect the fiber optic cable to one of the SFP slot, then to have the 10 gig backbone fiber optic link. You see, the SFP slot is empty. We cannot work with the fiber optic cable directly. We need second device. This is the SFP Plus transceiver. They're slightly different between the SFP Plus and SFP transceiver. One supports 1.25 gigabit speed and another supports 10 gigabit speed. All right, let's insert this SFP transceiver to this SFP Plus slot. The setup is pretty simple. We still need another short patch code to link this network switch to our main router so we got the internet data access from the main router and let's power up this network switch switch okay this device is ready at the first building then we need fiber optic cable between these two buildings right the client want to bury the fiber optic cable so we better choose the fiber optic cable with the very tight there are two options we can make the connector in the field but you Unlike the K5 or K6 Ethernet cable, it's easy to current and make the connector. The fiber optic cable, we cannot current the, current the cable directly since it's made of the glasses. If we current the glasses, we broke the glasses, right? So the first option is you can use the special tool like the Fusion tool to spicy a short patch code to the main fiber optic cable to get the connector. Automatically, you also can choose the factory pre-made fiber optic cable the connector is being built in the factory and there's also has the pulling eye to protect the connector in case you want to pull the fiber optic cable there's one more tip about the bury fiber optic cable it's better to bury the cable one foot below to avoid the hairy vehicle or the hairy machine to crash the cable now we have two strands we just use one strand to connect this network switch. Just be careful, there's options. You need to find the right direction to insert the fiber optic cable to this SFP plus transceiver. Now the setup is ready at the first building. Let's move to the second building. We need another switch in the second building. The setup is a metric, which is pretty much the same as the setup in the first building. First, let's install the SFP Plus transceiver to this switch. Now we have the port for the fiber optic cable. Let's get the fiber optic cable. We are using the A strand, so we'll pick the A strand for the second building. And power up this network switch. That's it. The setup is quite simple and straightforward. There's no need to configure this switch to come up with the 10 gig speed between these two buildings. I guess you already noticed we are using just one strand, not two strands, right? Since we are using the BIDI transceiver, it's taking a different wavelength to transmit and receive the data. One strand is enough. I remember someone ever asked, now we do have the two strands. Can we connect the second strand to the switch? The answer is yes or no. The reason I always say is no because the switch needs to support the port aggregations. 
For this two switch, it doesn't support port aggregations. If you connect two strands to this switch, it will crash the network immediately. However, if the switch you picked support port aggregations, you can use two strands to come up the network up to 20 git. It's pretty high speed between these two buildings. Even one of the strands is done, you still will have another strands working. All right, that's all for today's video. If you are interested in how to configure the port aggregation for different switch, please leave your messaging in the comment section below. We'll shoot another video.